how are you feeling after what looked like a pretty physical game against Melbourne? Not too bad now, considering you know we had the weekend off, so that that certainly helps and helps with the recovery, uh, I guess. And feeling not too bad uh, this morning, so um, once you get moving, might be a little bit different. But at this stage, I'm feeling okay. You had 16 tackles. Uh, was that a particular focus of yours going into the game, or was it just the way it panned out? Just the way it panned out. Um, it wasn't like I have a particular sort of marker going into games about tackling or anything like that. It's just pressure at the contest, really, and um, what will be will be. So, um, yeah, I guess it wasn't one of those things where I'd specifically put towards, um, you know, pre-game. It took a while for you guys to get your mojo going, really. Once you clicked, it took off. What, what do you take out of the game about how you get that last quarter performance into a four-quarter performance? Yeah, obviously, we've been trying to work on a fair bit in terms of how we want to play, and we've been really inconsistent, and uh, I guess... You know, we've cost ourselves in games by, you know, playing, you know, one or two good quarters. So, um, look, we were sort of able to just stay in it for most of those three quarters and to be able to win the arm wrestle in, in the last, it certainly helps. But that's not the type of football that we want to play. And, um, you know, we want to try and string together four good quarters of, of football. Have we underestimated the, the challenges you guys will face this year with personnel-wise injuries, retirements, folks leaving um, over the off-season? Does it, does it feel different to what you thought it might have entering the year? Oh, look, it was always going to be a tough year and, um, you know, most teams always put their best foot forward um, against us as well. Now, obviously, being the reigning premiers, it's quite difficult and a lot of teams come forward and uh, I guess the, when looking back on it last year, you know, we were the same for Richmond. You know, it's it's basically whenever you play the, the reigning premiers, it's almost like a grand final for that team. So, um, look, it, we're, you know, we're trying to get around that um, and we're trying to play our best football as well at the same time. So, um, yeah, we've got some things cut out for us. Do you feel absolutely feeling hunted there? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously last year we were going from the hunters and now we're, now we're the hunted. So it's certainly one of those things where, um, you know, we've got to try and, you know, take in our stride, but we also got to play consistent football at the same time. How do you get that mentality? You know, different, like hunting is different to being hunted. So what, what's in your own head as you go out knowing that everyone else is after you? Yeah, I think it's one of those things that we're, we're slowly trying to work through as well. But... Um, for me personally, I just try and play my role to the best of my ability. So um, I'm sure that you know most others try and do the same thing. So um, yeah, nothing in terms of I guess the mentality changes too much, but um, I guess you've got to be aware of it. Can you take us through Liam Ryan's mark? Yeah, that was pretty epic. So it felt like all game he was you know going to clunk one, and he was just that fingertip off. And I guess I was probably. Uh, directly in front, about 20 metres away from it, and to see him sort of do that passage of play where he's obviously ran a fair bit, and then to jump on top of one of the tallest blokes on the field, um, and especially in, I guess, a crucial time with the game, um, was absolutely phenomenal. So, um, credit to him. Do so you have that feeling? Do you? you can feel that that's about to happen? Like he has that energy? Yeah, he does. And it, as I said before, it, it, he always was flying for the for the football, but he was just that little bit off and. It just felt like he was he was due for a good clunk, and um, yeah, I'm just glad that he did it at that stage and was able to do it. Um, you know, on, on guess a, a pretty sort of you know tight um, part of the part of the game. Was Barty's reaction just as a I guess because he was so excited about it as well, or how, how did you read that? Oh, I think it was a mixture of emotions. There was obviously some um, banter going back and forth throughout the fair throughout the uh, fair bit of the game. So, look, I, I don't think there was too much into it. Um, obviously, it didn't hurt him, So, but it's not an act that you'd like to see. But um, we're all past that now, and uh, I guess, you know, nothing sort of too, too bad has come of it either as well. We all saw Liam Ryan going nuts, waffle level, taking stepy after stepy. Do, does he do that sort of stuff at training as well, or and what sort of stuff do you see that we don't? Yeah, not, not during the season. Um, it's a little bit more relaxed and um, you're probably more focusing on recovery. But during the pre-season when we're doing a bit of matching type of stuff, you, he can sort of get up and take a couple of clunks. So, um, yeah, it's, he, he's a, a, an electric footballer. Um, but there's also times there where we might need him at ground level as well. So he's just got to find that balance. But we'd like, like him to fly as much as possible. But um, there's also a bit of a balance to it. How energising is it for the team when that happens? Oh, it's it's yeah, it's pretty energising to to be quite honest. Um, you know, I I pretty much um, came up and hugged him straight up. He hadn't even kicked the goal either, so I was I was more happy that he'd taken the mark rather than kicking the goal. I think to put us in front or um, you know get it get us ahead. So look, that's I guess that's how um, electric he can be. Where did, uh, do you remember Ashley Sampy's mark and which one do you reckon's better? There's been a lot of comparisons considering they're both against Melbourne. <laughs> uh, I think Sampy's was out here on like the. 50, wasn't it? So 
that was pretty that was pretty big that was pretty epic um so i look i think if you had to draw comparisons i think maybe sam Hughes might be just on top he was standing but liam's was on top of one of the tallest blokes on the field so it's sort of one of those things where you've got to weigh it up uh willie Rowley back in the side good to have him back on the weekend yeah he's another one that certainly brings a bit of electricity into the side and a um, couple of things that he did throughout the game that certainly um, helped us as well. And I guess there's, there's some small things as well that you don't see that, you know, he does off the ball uh, that certainly helped the, the team as well. So it was great to have him back. Uh, there was hamstring uh, in the first quarter. Did you speak to him post-game or do you know if he was walking around all right after the game? Yeah, I just I asked him, I think, during the game when he had a bit of padding on and I just said, mate, how you going? And he just said, just a corky, I'll run it out, it's fine. So um, I think that's just how, it, that's how it's been played so far. How's Dan Venables doing? Have you had a chance to see him and speak to him? Yeah, I uh, I messaged him on Saturday. He said he's doing he's doing quite well. So um, yeah, I haven't seen him today, uh, but I have a chat to him once I do and, and see how he's holding up. Are you surprised Lewis Jetta has been suspended for his tackle on Tim Smith? Oh, look, it's one of those ones where it's obviously on the borderline. Uh, look, you'd like to pin the arm, but you'd also like to um, you know put him down as safe as possible. So it's one of those ones where it's a, it's a bit of grey area and obviously he pulled up a little bit rough from it. So um, look, I guess the club's going to decide what they're going to do about that, but um, it's just unfortunate. You laid 16 tackles. How, how hard is it in the, in the heat of the moment to actually get it right? Yeah, it's, it's extremely hard to get it right. Um, obviously, you, you, you know, you want to try and put as, as much controlled aggression into the contest as possible, so it's, it, it is difficult at times, and to find that balance is really hard. So if you play a stop, is you thinking that uh, the students can pay? Is it louder? Is it getting harder to work out what's going on? Like, does the crowd noise increase or anything causing confusion for players? Has it? Oh, it's it's that's a bit of a hard one to sort of say. Really, it's um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I haven't really thought about it too much. So, look, whether the crowd's louder or um, whether the umpires are letting the game play on a little bit more, then um, I'm not too sure. So, I haven't really thought about it at this stage. How big a blow would it be to if Jetta has to take the one week? Oh, look, he's obviously a valuable member to the, to the side. So, um, to have him out for a week would be difficult. But I'm sure that, you know, we've got the right people coming through as well that be able to fill his role. So, um, there's some, you know, really good players down at East Perth that are playing some good football in the back line. Is your depth and what you've got about and to like had a lot of injuries and stuff to just crap the year of availability. So to be able to keep putting blokes out and somehow finding ways to win, is that showing what you've got on your list? Oh, look, you always, everyone would like to have depth on their list and I feel that, you know, we've got a really good, strong group of players that are coming through and um, putting some pressure on some spots um, in particular areas. So um, I guess that does help having that depth and that competitive, competitiveness for spots certainly helps. Shannon Hearns starts this season. Do you think he's on track to be uh, another All Australian this year? Oh, look, I'd hope so. So I don't want to mock him too early, but he's playing some really good football at the moment, uh, and hopefully he can keep it up. But um, I guess anything can happen from from here till then. But you know, I, w I would like to see him get another sort of notch on the on the jacket. But at this stage, there's there's plenty of games to be played, and um, he's in really good form. So hopefully he can keep that up for us. Uh, uh, Gerald Bugle, Peel captain, was got abused by fans, uh, just sort of taunted on the weekend. How do you as a player sort of deal with that when you get that feedback from fans? Oh, look, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite difficult and you've got to try and put it past you. Um, but obviously there's a fine line as well between, you know, what you can say and what you can't. So I, I don't know too much about um, what happened with the with the Eagle incident. Um, but yeah, look, I guess um, there's always a line and obviously, you know, you hope the fans don't cross it. You and Adelaide are yeah, sort of at six and seven at the moment. Um, what do you make of Adelaide at the moment? Like, I've got a team doing the roller coaster at the beginning of this season. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, most of the teams really even us. We're playing inconsistent football, and so I was Adelaide in stages. So um, look, it, it's going to be a tough game, and you know, obviously, um, Pikey's been here before, so he sort of knows a little bit of the ins and outs. And um, you know, we're going to have our work cut out for us. So if we if we come to the game, um, you know, playing like we did against Melbourne, I'm sure that Adelaide will be able to, you know, maybe capitalise on 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 more of that, and um, it might cost us. So uh, you know, we have to try and string together four quarters. Out of the top eight, now, I haven't had a look at that. So, um, but look, as as I said before, it's a pretty inconsistent season at the moment. So, um, who knows? They they might end up finishing inside. So you never know.